Hi, it's Todd and Todd Stuff here, and today we're going to have a look at measuring the bow weights um, of the crossbows that I make. So we've got a windlass bow here, nice heavy uh, steel bow on it. Question is, of course, how powerful actually is it? Now, when I put up my YouTube videos and I talk about 300 pound or 500 pound or 800 pound bows, a lot of people, to be fair, just simply don't believe it. Um, now the bottom line is that medieval bows were heavy and by modern comparisons, modern context, of course they're ridiculously heavy. It's not a modern bow. The efficiency is just utterly, utterly different. Um, I've done a, a good video about um, medieval and, and uh, modern crossbows and the difference between the power of them and the draw weights and what it actually really translates to in real life. Um, you can have a, a look at that link um, later on if you want and the link is there for you to see. So. This bow here, it's a windlass crossbow. It draws around about 160 millimeters. Uh, so um, oh, around about uh, six and a half inches, something like that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put this on the bow scales and we will actually see what the weight is back onto the nut over that power stroke. Now, what's important to remember is the difference in brace height on crossbows, particularly crossbows, but the difference in brace height makes a massive difference to the effective deflection of the limbs at the end. So um, it's kind of a difficult concept to, to understand without actually just plotting it on a bit of paper and drawing the curves. But basically one millimeter increase in brace height here will give an effective deflection of five millimeters more at the nut. So it's very important to not over brace your bow, otherwise um, you can deform the bow very easily. But of course you want enough brace height that you know, you've got some serious power at this end. So I can move that half inch maybe, 12 millimetres. The other thing of course is that what is absolutely tied up with that is the length of the string. So a slight difference in length of string gives a, a difference in brace height and that gives a, a fairly large effective deflection in the bow limbs at the end which translates to a large difference in power. And the other of course is the actual length of, of the power stroke itself. So when I'm measuring the, the bow it's very important that I measure this distance um, uh, and then replicate that on my bow scales so that I can get an absolute reading for what this bow is. So I'll just start taking you through the process now. Uh, so the next step is to dismantle this and we'll go from there. Right, so the bow is on uh, the jacking mechanism for the load scales and as you can see here the string is just under this steel plate. It's about one millimetre clear. Okay, you can just see that tiny movement there. So it's about one millimetre clear. So what I'll actually do is I will draw this to 161 millimetres to account for that. So we'll take the reading at 161 millimetres. So I'm just going to get the scales on now. Um, oh, before I say that, the whole thing looks rather lopsided um, and wibbly wobbly. It is at the moment, because mainly it's got the stirrup and the irons on it at one side here. It just saves me taking it off. It doesn't affect anything. So just going to get the, the scales on. Now there is a central mark on the string there, so obviously I'm going to move the bar of this shackle over that central mark. So we've got the bottom hook. Okay. So hopefully that will be in a position where we can read it. Okay, let's have a look. Yep, you can read that, and we are set to pounds. Pounds in the bottom right hand corner there. So, up we go. So we've got, just for the record, about uh, 25 mil, one inch from brace, uh, we've got 45 pounds. Oh.
So we have got at the moment, sorry about that, a little bit awkward, uh, just under four inches, 100 mil, and we're reading 368 pounds. Five and a half inches, 140 mil. So that we are a smidgy over 600, so we're on 800 pounds. So tiny, tiny bit more. Get my ceiling. So that is about our distance, and we are drawing 865 pounds. So that is our distance, right? Let's bring it back down. This is the second of the two windlass bows that I made at the same time. So ostensibly, it should be the same, uh, the same bow steel that's on there. But like I said at the beginning, slight differences can make a really quite a large difference. So we'll just have a look at this one. Um, we're ready to go. So let's start to crank it up. So here we go. Quite annoying this jack system sometimes. So we're just registering now. Oops. So four and a half inches, hundred and fifteen mil. Five and a half. I've just got the ceiling height. <laughs> just going to keep an eye on it now because I'm getting close and I don't want to overdraw. There. 976, just short of a thousand. Nice. Okay. Well, that's going to be Scalagrim's one then because that's what he wanted. So here we go. Uh, so I'm just going to let it down in a moment, but basically, that's how I measure my draw weights. Thank you very much.